even help fish. And no, it's not Aquaman. Actually, it's Luca we are learning English with today. So here we have a band of three kids full of beans ready to confront the bullies and to win the race. This lesson will work like this. First, you watch the clip with subtitles, then you learn some of the most important vocabulary, grammar and pronunciation and get ready because at the end of the lesson you will test your comprehension by watching the clip one more time without subtitles and answering some of our quiz questions. Every week we help learners like you to understand your favorite TV series and movies with lessons like this one without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. And we would love to continue bringing you lessons for free. So remember to do these two simple things to support us. Subscribe to this channel, it helps us grow, and hit that bell button down below for you not to miss any of our newest lessons. jerk because he keeps winning the race, which he shouldn't even get to do anymore because he's too old and too much of a jerk. <laughs> you know, we underdogs have to look out for each other, right? What's under the dogs? Underdogs. You know, kids who are different, dressed weird, or a little sweatier than average. Uh... Too much? Too much. So, are you in town for the race? The Puerto Rosa Cup? Well, good talk. I gotta deliver these. Always be training, you know. <laughs> we should ask her about this Puerto Rosso Cup race. That's how the loud, scary human said he got his Vespa. This Pixar movie is set in Italy, so you'll hear some Italian words. Like this one, for example. So when the Gina thinks he can be a jerk. This means this imbecile or a stupid person. A jerk has pretty much the same meaning as an idiot. Julia refers here to Ercole, a town bully who keeps winning the annual race, although he's too old to compete with kids. He's a grown-up. But nobody has the guts or the courage to confront him and kick him out. That is to remove him from the event. So when Vegeta thinks he can be a jerk because he keeps winning the race, which he shouldn't even get to do anymore because he's too old and too much of a jerk. If you keep doing something, you continue doing it. You repeat it over and over again. Notice that the word keep is followed by a verb ending in ing. Keep trying, keep reading, keep winning. The ing ending has a nasal sound ng, so the word winning might be a bit tricky. The first n is a true n, win. And the second one is nasal, ng, winning, winning. The next expression is to get to. When you get to do something, you have a chance to do this. Or you don't have a chance, like in this example from Zootopia. Well, this is so exciting, actually. I mean, well, you know, I, I never get to do anything this important. <laughs> I bet you're thinking, oh my god, this girl is speaking so fast. And yes, Julia talks quite fast, but in fact, there is just a lot of connected speech. Have you noticed it? He can be a jerk because he keeps winning the race, which he shouldn't even get to do anymore because he's too old and too much of a jerk. Well, first, because is the shortened version of because. Then the word he loses the H sound in all instances here. Because he keeps winning the race. Note that in the phrase, which he shouldn't even, she also drops T sound in shouldn't. Which he shouldn't even get to do anymore. <laughs> you know, we underdogs have to look out for each other, right? Although it's hard to be the underdog in a game or race, for example, most people empathize with you and root for you. That's why underdog success stories are so popular in Hollywood. An underdog is someone who's unlikely to win a competition or contest. Why is there the dog? The thing is, the word was originally used in the illegal practice of dog fighting, and it was refers to a dog defeated in the fight. Ah, oh, this isn't our fight. I'm done being an underdog. Underdogs suck. <laughs> you know, we underdogs have to look out for each other, right? Usually friends or siblings look out for each other, or they take care of and protect each other. Also, in another context, the phrase look out is used to bring somebody else's attention to a particular danger. That's what you do in a herd. You look out for each other. What's under the dogs? Underdogs. You know, kids who are different. Dressed weird. Or a little sweatier than average. Uh, too much? 
too much. It's not the most pleasant thing about us humans, but when we are hot or after an intense workout, we tend to get sweaty. And some of us sweat a lot. Sweaty is when you're covered with sweat. To form a comparison, just add the ending ER. Sweaty, sweatier. And be careful with the pronunciation. It is sweat, not sweet. Sweaty, not sweetie. Do you have to go through the blood, sweat and tears when learning new English words and trying to remember them? We got a solution for you. So before we learn some more interesting idioms with the word sweat, let me tell you this. For this lesson, we created a deck of flashcards so you can use it to learn and review the vocabulary from today's lesson. We use advanced technology on the app so that more difficult words show up more frequently than the words you already know. Besides, for each word, you get the example sentences, pronunciation and the image to help you better memorize the word. As soon as you finish this lesson, go and check it out yourself. Download the Real Life English app today. You can do it by clicking on the link in the description to this video or by searching for Real Life English in your favorite app store. So, as I promised, here are some interesting idioms with the word sweat and try to guess the meaning first before we show it on the screen. Let's activate your English. Don't sweat it. Blood, sweat and tears. To break out in a cold sweat. Good job! Let's get back to the clip now. You know, kids who are different, dressed weird, or a little sweatier than average. You can compare yourself to another person using then and naming that person. I'm faster than my brother, but I'm slower than you. When you don't have any specific person in mind, you can go for a word average. You may be taller than average or sweatier than average, like Julia. Average means normal, typical. Be careful, though, when your work or performance is described as average, it means it's not that good. There is nothing special about it. So, are you in town for the race? The Portroso Cup? Well, good talk. I gotta deliver these. Always be training, you know. <laughs> we should ask her about this Portroso Cup race. That's how the loud, scary human said he got his Vespa. In town is a collocation that refers to a city where the person is. It doesn't require the definite article. Welcome to Alf's Toy Barn. We've got the lowest prices in town. If I ask you, are you in town? I'm asking if you are currently visiting my town, like Julia does here. She understands that the boys aren't local, so she makes an assumption that they're visiting because of the race. Porto Rosso Cup. Cup means a race in this context. Cup is a contest in which the winners are awarded a cup. For example, FIFA World Cup or Chess World Cup. Always be training sounds like a life motto. Always be learning is another good one and something we share in the real life English. It's interesting here that Julia sees the opportunity for training while doing her job, delivering fresh fish her father catches. This is a super valuable habit to see opportunities everywhere. It's the same with English. When students ask us what's the best way to learn English, we say don't learn it, live it. When you make that mindset shift, you'll start seeing the opportunities for practicing English everywhere. Always learn new words in the context. That's tip number one. Tip number two, explore the family of the word. Here's an example of the word family I can give you with the word scary. Scary means frightening, bringing fear. I don't like scary movies. When I watch a scary movie, it makes me feel scared or frightened. When my little kid is scared by a scary dog, I will scare the dog away with loud noises. Crows and other birds are usually scared away from crops by a scarecrow. Boom! No, I was scary. I didn't know I was that scary. <laughs> so you see, instead of one word scary, you learned four new words. Why don't you try to make your own sentences with all of them and share them in the comments with us?
We will now watch the second part of the clip and I just wanted to remind you that you can review the vocabulary for this lesson in our Real Life English app. Don't forget to download it. Hey, uh, it's Julia. Julia! My name is Julia. Okay. When you race in a cup, what do you get? Soldi, prize money. Oh. Okay. No, no, keep going. What? Why? Ask her about the prize money. But that stuff is useless. Maybe that becomes a Vespa. How does that become? Just ask her. Fine, fine, fine. Hello again. Ciao. Can we turn the money into something else? Something like <gasps> that? <laughs> no, but it could get you that. È un'ora che aspetto davanti al portone Fatti ma dare dalla mamma a prendere la te It's so beautiful. Yes, we need it. Great, so we'll just win the race. You'll have to beat Ercole. Okay, so we'll beat Ercole. Huh, really? He thinks we beat Ercole this guy. <laughs> First of all, get in line! Every summer that Jerk makes my life miserable, so no one's taking him down unless it's me. Second, this isn't any old race. It's an epic, grueling, traditional Italian triathlon. Swimming, cycling, and eating pasta. So you'd need a teammate. Well, we'll figure it out. Thanks, human girl. Hey, hey, wait, wait, Alberto. What if we join our team? Hmm. Better idea. Hey, Spew. Girls! Santa Mozzarella. Congratulations, you're joining our team. Ha! I race alone. We could be under the dogs, too. Hey, it's okay, Luca. She'd rather do the whole race alone again. Maybe this time she won't throw up as much. Uh, hang on! You want to be on my team, huh? Let's see what you got. Alberto calls Julia spulia. That's an intentional play on words. You see, to spew means to vomit or throw up. Another expression for this clip. Early in the movie, Julia told them that in the contest of eating pasta, she didn't manage to actually eat it and keep it. Probably it was just too much for a little girl. So she threw up. The name spulia originates from that accident. It's a made-up name. No, no, keep going. What? Why? Ask her about the prize money. But that stuff is useless. Maybe that becomes a Vespa. How... Well, you will agree with me if I say that money has value. In other words, it's valuable. Useless, on the other hand, means of no value. The boys from the sea think they can't make use of it. Let's listen to these two sentences again and practice the connected speech. Okay. When you race in a cup, what do you get? What do you morphs into what are ya? What do you get? No, but it could get you that. The T sound in but stands between vowels and so it turns into a flap T, giving the D sound. The T in it is a stop T, so we don't hear it and all three words blend together. But it could. Get you becomes get you, following the T plus Y pattern that gives us this sound CH. Great, so we'll just win the race. You'll have to beat Ercole. Okay, so we'll beat Ercole. Huh, really? He thinks to beat Ercole this guy. To beat someone is to defeat them in a game or in a competition. And when you take someone down, it may mean not only to defeat them, but also to kill a person. And of course, that's not the case here, but you may hear it in action movies. That's him, lads! Take him down! <laughs> First of all, get in line! Every summer, that Jerk makes my life miserable, so no one's taking him down unless it's me. When Julia says get in line, she means she's the first in line to deal with Ercole. Boys should wait their turn. If your little brother is asking you to let him use the computer now while you're learning English with us, you can say to him, get in line, meaning I'm gonna finish this lesson, so wait for your turn. When you feel extremely unhappy, you are miserable. What is your problem? Does seeing me fail somehow make you feel better about your own sad, miserable life? It does, 100%. So no one's taking him down unless it's me. Unless is a conjunction, meaning except if. 
so no one except Julia should attempt to defeat Hercule. Second, this isn't any old race. It's an epic, grueling, traditional Italian triathlon. Swimming, cycling, and eating pasta. So you'd need a teammate. Well, we'll figure it out. Grueling describes something extremely tiring and difficult, demanding great effort and determination. Like competitions or expeditions. My expeditions were grueling, treacherous, and only served to build my company and my fortune. A triathlon is like a marathon, but much harder. It consists of three different events, typically swimming, cycling, and long-distance running. The most famous triathlon is an Ironman World Championship. A sports competition that combines skiing and shooting a rifle is known as a biathlon. If you play any team sports, you probably have teammates. A teammate is a player in the same team. Figure it out to find the solution to a problem after some thought. Hey, Spew! Girls! Congratulations, you're joining our team! <laughs> I race alone. This is another Italian phrase, and she makes it fun by naming the type of cheese, mozzarella. By the way, what would be the English equivalent for this exclamation? Hey, it's okay, Luca. She'd rather do the whole race alone again. Imagine you have a choice, and there is something that you prefer doing more than another available option. You can use the word prefer, but also you can say, I would rather. Would rather is followed by the infinitive without two. Let's look at these examples. I'd rather get a taxi than wait for the bus. I'd rather watch a film in English with subtitles than one dubbed in my native language. Now I need you to focus and hear this. When its subject is different from the subject of the following verb, would rather is followed by a past subjunctive. I'd rather you didn't say that. Jane would rather her husband didn't stay so late at the office. No thanks, I'd rather spend time with the baby. We would rather he die than give it to you. And how about this sentence? It's rather dangerous. Does it indicate preference like in previous examples? It doesn't. Rather here means to a certain or significant degree. You can use it before an adjective or adverb to give emphasis. It has a similar meaning to the word quite. She's rather good at dancing. She's quite good at dancing. I'm rather good at shoes. You want to be on my team, eh? Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got means show me what you can do. It's a way of challenging people to demonstrate what they are capable of. The T and Y combination in what to you gives the ch sound, what you. Try to repeat it now. Let's see what you got. Okay, fuzzball, let's see what you got. You asked for it. Now it's time to test your comprehension. jerk because he keeps winning the race, which he shouldn't even get to do anymore because he's too old and too much of a jerk. <laughs> Why does Julia think that it's unfair that Ercole keeps winning the race every year? You know, we underdogs have to look out for each other, right? What's under the dogs? Underdogs, you know. Kids who are different, dressed weird, or a little sweatier than average. Uh, too much? Too much. Choose the correct phrasal verb in the sentence. We should ask her about this Portoroso Cup race. That's how the loud, scary human said he got his Vespa. Choose the word you hear in the sentence. That's how the loud human said he got his Vespa. Okay. When you race, in a cup, what do you get? Soldi, prize money. Oh. 
Okay. No, no. Keep going. What? Why? Ask her about the prize money. But that stuff is useless. Maybe that becomes a Vespa. How does that become? Just ask her. Fine, fine, fine. What does stuff mean here? Great, so we'll just win the race. You'll have to beat Hercule. Okay, so we'll beat Hercule. Huh, really? He thinks we'll beat Hercule, this guy. <laughs> First of all, get in line! What is another way to say get in line here? Every summer that Jerk makes my life miserable, so no one's taking him down unless it's me! What does Julia mean by saying? Thank you so much for learning with us today, and if you liked learning with Luca, Here's another lesson we did with the same movie. Vespa is freedom. <gasps> Pretty cool, right? <gasps> uh, huh. Are you gonna make one? I think you have all the parts. I do have the parts. I am gonna make one. You wanna help? Me? Yeah. Wait. No, I can't. 